Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval. Get out of the big city and experience a construction zone free test drive. There is such a thing. We're back for another edition of the Standing By podcast. I'm Terry DeMonte. That's Ted Bird. How do you do? I'm uh, fine and dandy. Thank you. And uh, aren't we awash in gratitude? Look at us. We're going to do another uh, another season of podcasts. It's season three of Standing By, the Terry and Ted podca- podcast. Yes. <laughs> produced by Pantelis and Mike Ward and our friend Poseidon, who's sitting right over there. Yep. And they're having us back again. They, they, we must be doing something they like, Terry. They haven't thrown us out yet. No. And uh, us being the insecure performers we are, we're, we keep, keep calling them and saying, are we okay? Are <laughs> Do, we you like okay? Us? Do you like us? <laughs> <laughs> are we good? <laughs> Please. Anyway, uh, they've had us back. And um, one of the things that I've learned over the course of the last, uh, I don't know, eight to ten months is uh, podcasting is like the wild, wild west. So... Episode whatever, season whatever, you pick the podcast when you like and listen to it uh, whenever you like. And I've been hearing that a lot of people uh, use the podcast for commutes. A lot of people have told me they uh, use it while they're cooking. A lot of people do it uh, while they're trying to relax. There's uh, there's just a, a, a myriad of ways to in, uh, enjoy the podcast, and we appreciate the, f- the uh, feedback we get on the Standing By Podcast Facebook page. That's where we get a lot of our interactions. We also appreciate that our sponsors keep coming back. And uh, we've even got a new sponsor. Wait till you hear about this. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we need to start with our title sponsor. We do. Jaguar Land Rover Laval, who never hesitate when we say, would you like to maybe for one more season? Yes, Yes. we're back. Yeah. Yeah, sign us up. We're there. Jaguar Land Rover Laval. And I was up there uh, over the weekend to uh, fetch a courtesy vehicle to ferry Terry to and fro the studio. And they gave me, this time around, the Jaguar F-Pace 25T. And far be it from me to look a gift horse in the mouth. It's a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. But it's kind of like the West Island Yummy Mummy version of this Jaguar <laughs> SUV in a lovely white color. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and it's a beautiful car. And again, I'm not I'm not complaining at all. I'm, no, it's uh, I'm, absolutely I'm grateful gorgeous. they gave it to me. But when we were up in the, my son Charlie and I went, uh, went up and we were in the, uh, the uh, pre-owned showroom which you wouldn't know it's a pre-owned showroom because the vehicles in there all look brand spanking new and they're absolutely spectacular. And I saw one of the F-Type coupes and I went, Charlie, that's that looks just like that car that they gave Terry and I last summer. And he goes, it is that car, Dad. It's the same car. Wow. And uh, now it's all dressed up and they're going to sell it. And they had an F-Pace SUV. It's the, Is it the SVR? It's the SVR, yes. Pantel- uh, Pantelis. I keep calling Poseidon Pantelis and vice versa. It's okay. A lot of us get us, a lot of people get us confused. Uh, Pantelis is very unhappy about it. I don't mind it. <laughs> I find that you're quite a bit better looking than him. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. If, in, a as a matter of fact, actually. yeah. If I ever switch teams, I want you to be my first. <laughs> oh, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, this SVR is 550 horsepower. Wow. So when they gave me the 25T, I was kind of like, yeah, but what? <laughs> could, can't, yeah, but I. It's you just don't the, want a fast I, car, I know, Ted. You're just going to get tickets. Yeah, that would just be. Yeah. Uh, th- those are tickets waiting to happen. So thank you to uh, Adrian and Renato, and and uh, Nino and everybody at uh, the Jaguar Land Rover Laval for coming back on board for the courtesy vehicle. Visit them at LandRover.ca and Jaguar.ca, and we'll tell you more over the course of the season about some of the some of the things they have planned they have planned as a dealership and that Land Rover and Jaguar have planned as as major luxury car brands and avoid all the cones and uh, orange signs that's and head right up to Laval go to Laval yeah. and take yeah. a, what we would like to call it a construction zone free test drive and and and, and take those vehicles out and, and let them perform the way they're supposed to perform if you're uh, watching on uh, YouTube or uh, watching the video portion of the podcast um, it seems strange because Ted and I are ignoring the man who's sitting <laughs> at the table. It's like really weird. Hey, it's, <laughs> hey, wait, it's a guy. It's, it's a guy's wandered in there. It's very strange because you and I talk to each other and pretend that yeah. he isn't there. Which Poor is Mark. Very, Sorry, very Mark, rude. but it's very rude of us. Um, and um, we are uh, pleased as punch. Um, that one of uh, one of Montreal's most famous and, and hardest working and uh, very successful actors. Ne- never mind one of Montreal's, one of Canada's. Yeah, one of Canada's. Yeah. Sorry about that. But there's a certain amount of pride I have, the fact that he's not only 
from Montreal, but is still in Montreal. Yeah, has stayed in Montreal to ply his trade. Mark is, Camacho. Good morning, yes, Mark. Good morning, yeah, Mark. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, this yeah. Is, uh, I'm great. To, I'm happy to be here. I'm absolutely thrilled that you decided to come in um, because one of the, you know, there's there so many things that Ted and I were talking about this this morning at breakfast that we want to talk to you about. And, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, all about how you can make a living and a, a good and decent living as a Canadian actor, and, and specifically, as I said to you before, um, it's impressive that you've managed to stay in Montreal all of this time, because most people, like most uh, children of Anglo couples, moved to Toronto. As, and, as ours did. Yeah, yeah and in that game... Um, you would think that, you know, with somebody with your resume, Mark, you would have ended up in Toronto. How did you not? Uh, <laughs> you would think, right? But no, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I almost did a little while ago. I almost, uh, we, we were doing a show, uh, maybe 30 years ago and it went to, it called Sheer Madness and, uh, I went to Toronto and it, it closed after four months and that was, that was my stay in Toronto. But no, I don't know. I just, I just, I just live, this is my city. I'll, I'll yeah. always, I'll always be here. You know, I can. Yeah, I'll go away. I'll go away and work, but I'll always come back to Montreal, man. I mean, this is this is this is where this is where I want to be. Born and raised, Montreal Born is raised. home. Absolutely, yeah. And you're still in love with it. Uh, in love with Montreal? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you know, despite the uh, despite the, the orange cones that you were talking about yeah. and the three thousand dollar you know the, the ball <laughs> joints that you have to replace on your on your vehicle every year. Uh, no, I, I I I love Montreal. I love the, I love the culture. I love the intimacy that Montreal yeah. has. We were talking about that earlier, Ted. You know, uh, uh, Toronto is a great city. Now we 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 as is it ever born and raised <clears throat> Montrealers. We're not we're not supposed to say that. Yeah. You know, but but uh, Toronto's fantastic. But one thing Toronto I don't think we'll ever have is the intimacy that Montreal has. What do you mean by inti intimacy? That's interesting to me, Mark. Because I, I I'm a born and raised Montrealer who's who gave up and moved to British Columbia. So I'm interested <laughs> in your perspective. Well, yeah, Toronto is just is. Is just enormous, right? It's it's kind of like oh, okay. ten, ten Montreal, right, right. Uh, and Montreal, I like to describe it as a, a a a little big city, right? You know, it's 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 not a, it's certainly not a town. It's a, it's a city, but there's there's an intimacy about right. it. There's you know, uh, you walk around you, you know Saint Denis, or you walk around on Saint Catherine Street, or you're in Little Italy. There's all these intimate little pockets. Uh, and it, Toronto is just enormous. It's just, it's just vast. Yeah. Uh, whereas I think, you know, we've got it a little bit more condensed. In yeah. Toronto. That's a very, very excellent point. Yeah. I think Toronto is now the fourth largest metropolitan area in North America, if I'm not mistaken. Really? After wow. New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Well, and we're, we, you, we're both from a generation, and I remember this as a kid where we used to make fun of Toronto, and it was easy to make fun of Absolutely. Toronto. I remember one year I was invited for the very first time to the Junos, and the Junos were on a Sunday night. And I remember being with people from American record companies uh, who were all standing slack-jawed as the people in the hotel wheeled the alcohol out of the room because it was 10 <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> they were like, hey, where are you going with that? <laughs> and that was that was yeah. the old days of Toronto, the yeah. good, but that's all changed. I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, both of my kids live there, and, uh, and you know, they're... They they know all the, the the hot spots. They know all the great spots to go. All the great restaurants, uh, and there are plenty. Of yeah, them. there are plenty of great you know uh, bars and restaurants. And it's a great it's a great city to be in. Yeah, you know, it's, it, but it's just vast. It's enormous. Um, let's let's uh, start talking about acting, which is a profession that's always really really fascinated me, and is a, a um, I would guess. I'm speaking strictly as an observer, a very difficult profession to make a living in. Um, and you've done so well at it and, and been at it so long. Your resume is, is really, really impressive on so many levels. Uh, let's start from when did you decide you wanted to act and how did you go about getting started? Yeah, it, it, it's it's so funny that, uh, that you talk about that. It, there was it was never a, a decision like why well, I'm going to be an actor. Mm. Uh, it was sort of evolved over a course of several years. Uh, coming out of high school, uh, you know, I would I, I'd love to be on stage, do, you know, do these stupid talent shows and and all that. And then I went to, into Seychelles and creative arts and. Uh, you know, we did we did plays there, and that was a lot of fun. And my creative arts, uh, my creative writing teacher said, "What what would you like to do in a perfect world?" 
And, and, and I said, oh, man, I'd like to be an actor, but nobody, nobody makes a living acting. You know, it's, you know, it's like winning a lottery. And she said, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to make an appointment for you right here and now. And she picked up the phone and she called the Concordia Theater Department and she literally booked a, oh. uh, an audition for me. And I was like, wait, stop. So, and then I got accepted into the department uh, despite a horrible audition. Uh, <laughs> And when they call, when they called to say I was accepted, I said, "You you you know you're speaking to Mark Camacho, right? Because <laughs> y- you must be making a mistake. That audition was horrible." Uh, but anyway, I, then I, I graduated from that, and I, and I still I still was not well. I'm still not going to be an actor. You know, I'll ha- I'll have a BFA and and I'll hit the job market with a university degree at the very least, and I'll go into sales or something. And I you know, just booked these little jobs. And then a, a friend of mine, an actor, said, "Well, if you keep working, why don't you just keep doing it?" And, and it was like, well, I guess, I guess I could, but I mean, during the course of that time, I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. Wow. Uh, literally, uh, I, I got my real estate license. Wow. I was selling real estate. I was waiting on tables. I was working in metal shops. I was doing all the this stuff that you had to do to stay in the business. And then eventually I was lucky to just be doing this for a living. How did you end up, sorry, Tara, how did you end up learning the craft along the way? Were you, were you? Was it part experience, part mentoring? Did you take outside courses? What was that process? Well, I was at the theater department. Uh, I took the, the, the uh, acting courses at the um, uh, theater department. I graduated with a uh, specialization in theater performance. But, be, but after that, once you I, got into the industry, were there mentors along the way? Uh, yeah, actually. I mean, uh, you know, I grew up, I mean, not not you know in person mentors but i grew up with the likes of mel blank and uh yeah. and chuck jones with you know bugs bunny and and uh, and all of these guys and and i just i just watch and you retain so much i mean from from watching this and and just the timing uh and uh you know i would watch i would watch guys like dennis franz you know and say ah, man that's that's a career that i'd like to have and and then of course Paul Giamatti got my career, so that uh, <laughs> was a bit True of a, true, yeah. was a bit of a. <laughs> so uh, he, he's he's well aware of it actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Have you ever met him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had that conversation with him? With him? Yes, yeah. yes, we have. Actually. Did he laugh? <laughs> he did laugh. I mean, he did laugh. We were doing a. We, I was doing a, a movie that he actually won a Golden Globe for called mm, Barney's, Barney's version. version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we worked together on that. And oh, I'd been confused for him so many times. I, I, I was at, uh, at I was at TIFF um, in in Toronto a couple of years uh, uh, a couple of years ago doing a press junket for something. And you're walking across the street, and it just happened to because everybody's an A-lister there in, 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 when you're except me. <laughs> and I was walking across the street. I just happened to be standing beside Woody Harrelson and uh, Kurt Russell, and and we were walking across the street. So people automatically assume, oh well, you must be one of these guys. So you know because I look like Paul Giamatti, this, uh, this person runs up to me and says. Mr. Jamadi, I'm a huge fan of your work. Please, you've got to sign this. And before I could say, look, I'm not Paul Jamadi. Please, please. I, I saw you. I saw you. You were wonderful and lady in the water. Uh, I, I, you went sideways. Oh, my God. You know, I, I was just like, what's your name? Yep. Okay, fine. And I'm I, Paul Jamadi. Yeah. And I told, I told Paul that story uh, when we were sitting, having lunch. And he, he, he's so gracious. He said, well, you think you think your life is bad? My, my, I can't leave my house. People coming up to me going, "Oh my God, Mr. Camacho, I thought you were fantastic." Uh, and I was like, uh, "Thanks, thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm sure that happens to you all the time." Hey, yeah. Do you remember the audition piece? The first audition piece. What was it? Uh, for for, that I, for, that, for Concordia, yeah, that you said was terrible. I what? do remember. Do you? I was, yes, I do. I, I, I had. Uh, we were given a we were given a choice of uh, Shakespearean monologues oh, to memorize, which you know I, I'm a kid in in yeah. I've never spoken these words aloud. You know. I've never said the word vow in, in, in my life. So I picked foolishly a monologue from King Lear. Oh Christ. Uh, yeah, bad move. Bad move. And I had well, I had one contemporary piece that, that I had to do. My contemporary piece, quote unquote, was from the importance of being earnest. Oh Jesus. Which, which I had done which I had done in Champlain. Uh, wow. so that one I kinda knew, but I flubbed. It was horrible. Really? I, mean, I think what sa- what saved me is that uh, uh, the, Jerry Gross, who was the chairman of the department at the time, great man, he said, all right, uh, let, let's just stop the, the Shakespeare. He stopped me in the middle of it because it, it, it was just painful. I'm sure more painful for him than it was for me. And he said, oh, why don't we do a little, a little improv piece? Because why don't you tell me a story that's not true? So I said, all right, all right. So I pretended I, I was telling people about how my audition for Concordia went. <laughs> and I said, oh, man, I smoked it. I smoked it. Like Shakespeare, I brought the man to tears. So I, I went on. I, I think maybe that, that may have been what saved me. But, yeah, it was horrible. Do you still have to audition? 
Oh man, do I ever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 I have to say, it's it's uh, it can be a little irksome, you know. As, yeah. as, as Canadian performers, yeah. we, there's there's a phenomenon that happens sometimes. I like to say it is that every morning when the sun comes up, it erases everything that you've done <laughs> in the last thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll walk in and, you know, uh, he, you know, you, I, you, I mean, you, oh, a detective. Hmm. This will be a stretch for me. I've yeah. never played a detective yeah. before. So, but yeah, we have to audition. You got to, you got to play the game. What, we what, do get offers. Sometimes. What is it? Because is it because of a lot of American productions come up and are unfamiliar with, with your, yeah, your that's resume? A, sure. That's a large part of it. And, and there's also the network. There's so many factors that right. contribute to it. You know, if, if you, there could be a director who's never worked with you, he, right. he I have, you have no idea who right. you are. Uh, the network who is not convinced that you could possibly do this or uh, it, or the producers who, you know, have somebody else in mind. Right. So there's just so many factors that happen. And if, if you choose to go the route of, well, I'm not, well, screw this. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not auditioning for this. Like, okay, fine. Yeah. I don't care. Next. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of have to swallow it and, and just go in and read. It. You must be at the point in your career now, though, that, that if, if a role is not, or if someone decides a role is not right for you it's not because you're not good enough to do it it's because it's just not a fit yeah I, and that's what i that's what i say to my kids and i say to all the young actors it really has very little to do with you personally yeah uh, you're very rarely going to lose the job because uh you blew the audition you're going to lose the job because you're too old too young too fat too thin too bald too have too much hair whatever the case may be so there's just way too many factors so you go in there and you do your damn best and you try to show them what you can do uh, and hopefully they, they like it. How, how many years does it take to get there mentally? To, you, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm there that. yet. Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't know. I, because it must be hard not to take it personally, Mark, I would imagine, eh? It, it is, but I think it, it takes a little while. I mean, it, it, you, you get, it gets drummed into your head after a while. And if you, if you, if you take it personally... It, you can't. I don't think you can do this. Right. Um, <clears throat> I've lost a lot of roles uh, that I thought you know I had a good shot at, and it really has nothing to do. You see the actor who played it, and you go, "All right, oh, fair enough." You mm -hmm. know, that that was a fair choice. That was right. a good choice. And sometimes you look and go, "This guy's fucking shit." <laughs> God damn it! How did I not get this goddamn role? Uh, 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 but you know, I mean, it's it happened with 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 both of my kids. You know, it, it, you know, Jesse was uh, auditioning for stuff when he was eight years old yeah. uh, over at network uh, down in L.A. at Fox. Wow. And, you know, he doesn't get it. And he's had his heart broken from the age of eight or nine years old. Yikes. So yeah. they, they, both of my kids have pretty thick skins. Now. I want to talk about the family, because the family of actors, Ted and I were saying, what a fascinating dinner. Yeah, dad, mom, Did, and kids. Yeah, 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 dinner table it must yeah, suckers be. suckers for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm curious about uh, a, there's a bunch of things about acting that fascinates me and one of the one of the things that I've never understood watching um, you know I get cutaways and camera angles and all of that but you know you watch something like Spencer Tracy at the end of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and he was you know months away from death and I thought to myself how the hell did he remember all of those words like how how do you deliver that how does that is there a magic trick is there is it does every actor have it different i mean how do you how do you show up on set prepared like that i think it's it, honestly for me anyway it's 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 uh, it's reflex is it uh, yeah i mean you 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 know you learn the lines obviously and then once you once you step into the character it just sort of takes over that, uh, and, really and anything, it? yeah. Wow. No matter what is going on around you, uh, you uh, you you just you just step into that into that character. You just put on the the costume, and and you're there. And I've heard a lot of actors say a a big 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 part of acting is listening. Is that true? That's a huge part of it. Yeah. Really? Eh? Yeah. I, and 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 if you'll allow me to you please know, to drop to drop a name, please it's like, do. Oh, Mark, this one's yours. Sorry, <laughs> I, said, oh, I just tripped over Rod <laughs> yeah, Steiger there, Mark. I, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I was working with with Rod Steiger, and and uh, we were we were doing a we were doing a scene together, and uh, they uh, he had a he had a call he he had a, a rap time that they had to abide yeah. by. Uh, he was a little older at the time, <clears throat> and so they said, "All right, we're turning around on Mark now, Mr. Steiger. You can go." And uh, and he and he literally said, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> And this, this 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 poor you know the third AD was like I'm sorry, Mister. He goes, how the hell is he going to do his job if I'm not here to? 
So, and, and oh. I, I thanked him after. I said, you know, thank you, you know, Mr. Steiger for sticking around. He goes, well, anybody who doesn't stick around is fucked. <laughs> so acting is acting and reacting and listening. And if I'm not here to listen to you and help you or react, then I'm not doing my fucking job, am I? Jesus. Wow. So, that's a pro. Th- thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's also a very good imitation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, well, I, I, it, was, it was such a fun story uh, uh, that I, w- <laughs> I was on it. Well, this was such a full pause. Speaking of Rod Steiger, it was horrible. Uh, I was doing a movie with the wonderful and talented Rita Moreno. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about different things that happened. I mentioned this Rod Steiger bit. And, and I said, I think he's, he was like that because of, you know, on the waterfront when he did that scene with Brando in the back of the cab, yeah. Brando wasn't there. Uh, oh my did, god! I didn't he know literally that. did it with a whiteboard. Jesus and, and Christ! So How did you know that? Life. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's st- that stuck with Rod Steiger for a long time. And wow! He was very bitter about it. So I was going on and on. I was telling this whole story, and you know, Brando wasn't there, and Brando was this, and Brando was that, and Rita Moreno was standing beside me, and then she 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 finally who st- she's so sweet, and then she finally goes, "Well, you know, Marlon was probably very tired." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh my God! They were they were an idol." The Hollywood I history, exactly. Yeah. I just I've just offended what, like the Hollywood royalty. I was you know I was like Fred Flintstone and Mr. Slate, you know, getting smaller and smaller. It's like oh, that's the most horrible thing. So I spent the rest of that shoot, you know, just, can I get you something? Rita? <laughs> how, do you, how do you take your coffee? <laughs> how do you know? You know, you've been on set with so many giants of the game. How do you know whether or not they are going to be easy to work with, approachable, etc.? Like, there's got to be an air in the room when Brando is about to arrive on set. Absolutely, right. Yeah, and yeah. and did you were you on set during the um, uh, the score? I was, what? yeah. Uh, uh, I was on. He was on set on a few of the days. Jesus that, that I Christ! Uh, I didn't. I didn't have any scenes with him. But, but are, are you allowed to? Sorry to interrupt, Mark. But yeah, are, yeah. You allowed, are you allowed to stand there? You know, draw a gate? <laughs> no, not really. No. You, you, his his uh, his his trailer was he was sort of cordoned off. Uh, right. Yeah. He's not. He's not terribly well. You find out pretty quick. Yeah. Whether whether you know the, the these these giants are open or not. Uh, and it's usually within the first minute of yeah. meeting them. You could see how how gracious or how uh, I don't want I don't want to say closed off, but you know, uh, standoffish, or or even just shy. I oh mean, yeah, um, okay, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, uh, Robert De Niro is not is not is not an outgoing no. kind of guy. He's he's very nice, very pleasant. Yeah, but he's not like hey, how you doing? Come on in, yep. have a coffee yeah. with me. He's not yeah. at all like yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, no, some of them are just incredibly warm and, and, and friendly, and you know, most of them are really. There's a scene, I don't know if you would know this, there's a scene with, uh, in that movie, The Score, with Brando, he's sitting at a bar, and um, I think he's, it's him and De Niro, and I, I watched the scene and I thought to myself, that looks ad-lib to me, that, that looked to me like Brando just went off script just for a second and De Niro just stuck right with him. It, it, it made, did I imagine that? It, no, or? you probably didn't. Uh, I mean, uh, when it came to... It, it, Mr. Brando was, yes, Mr. was Brando, actually... Yeah, was, <laughs> uh, was, was, I, I don't know how happy he was to be on that set, but uh-huh. when he was working with Bobby... All was well, so uh, th- th- you probably didn't imagine that at all. Okay, um, when when he was working with uh, with uh, De Niro, uh, he was much more comfortable, and you know things were were flowing out. But um, I'm I'm not sure how happy he was to be on that. And yeah. Frank Oz, who was the night who directed uh, yeah. who directed the score, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. But uh, <laughs> had to uh, had to deal with some uh, some stuff that that. that that Marlon Brando thought was kind of funny when he would walk on set. He would just, shh, everybody, Yoda's here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, the, two giants like that can get away with that, can't they? Like De Niro and Brando want to go off the script. No one's going to yell. No, cut. no, not necessarily. I, mean, yeah. I think, I think you know, Frank would would gently try to guide <laughs> them back in. Uh, you know, but no, you know. He, it, it, the more he would try, it would be like, oh, well, Miss Piggy's telling me I've got to do. <laughs> oh, so, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, um, uh, tell people, what was your role in that movie? I've forgotten, Mark. Uh, <laughs> play, his name was Eric Saperstein. Saperstein, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the fact that you even recognize that yeah, is really impressive. I, no, I, I, I remember, because I was really taken with that movie, A, because I thought it was a terrific story. But if you're a Montrealer, you've got to watch this film. Yeah. Because it was one of the few films that didn't pretend it was somewhere else. Right. 
it was you know it's was shot in old montreal it was all it, you know it were like really really quality people in the movie i thought frank oz did an amazing job putting it together i agree uh it has an, a really cool ending and yeah. and uh it's just it's a really really good picture yeah yeah and it was it was a blast to work on and must have been it really it really was we i mean i only i only was there for you know for four or five days or so right. Um, but, uh, that I was so disappointed. I'd, I'd end up booking this role. Um, and, uh, and the audition was kind of funny because I went in and the producers were there and I had no idea I was reading with one of the producers. They were reading opposite me. And Frank said, you know, why don't we just throw the script away and let's just, let's just, uh, let's just improv this scene. So I had to be like the nervous guy who's, you know, just wants to get, just get, get the money and get the hell out of there. And so I'm, re- I'm reading with, uh, I, I wish I could remember, uh, this, this person's name now, but I was reading with them. And, and I started going off script and I was like, uh, you know, uh, come on, we got to get the fuck out of here. Let's get the money. Let's get it. Let's get it now. And, and, and she said, uh, no, no, that, that's not the line. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I literally said, I literally grabbed this script out of her. I said, I don't give a fuck what this line is. All right. I wanted it. And I just went on and on and on. And Frank sort of just jumped up and went, okay, I think we're good. I think we're okay. <laughs> So, uh, and then I realized later that uh, he said, I introduce you to the producer. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll never work in this. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I'll just. But then, then they ended up cutting the scene um, oh, they, shit. They, before, before I, before I, I, uh, I could do it. And I was really disappointed. And then they called a week later. So no, they put it back in. Oh, wow. So yeah, it was a bit of a roller coaster. He's uh, he seemed like an, I, I don't know him. I've, I, I lucky enough to interview him once, but he seems like a nice man. I would, uh, my guess is he runs a comfortable set. I oh, mean, a hundred, a hundred. Unless you're Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, he, no, Frank, you can't, nice everything, guy. everything you would think, you yeah. would think he is, he is. That's I nice mean, to hear. Yeah, he's a bad fabulous. Because he is Grover, after all. Grover and Fozzie <laughs> Bear and, and yeah. Oh. He does those voices? Yes. Yeah. Really, yeah, eh? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. But he's also a film director. Yeah. yeah. And, a re- wow. and I think a really good one. I think he's, he's done some really terrific work. Yeah, so and the, the Steve Martin comedy, um, I'm trying to remember the name anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah no, he's, Frank is great. Yeah. He's, he's um, we were going to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. I could see it in your eyes, Ted. We need to talk about our new sponsor. This yes. is the funniest thing. Sean Smith, who is the founder and president of an engineering firm called Voswin, mm-hmm. said to me, I'd be interested in advertising on your podcast. And I said, yeah, but you're an engineer. <laughs> what for? <laughs> you know who you're dealing with here, right? <laughs> so what are we going to tell people how to build bridges? How does this work exactly? We're going to make highways? <laughs> Uh, but it's not that at all. Voswin is a, a company that helps inventors and innovators. If you are a company or an individual and you have an idea or you have an existing product or service and you want to enhance it and it requires some kind of engineering, you go to Voswin and they take your idea and they run with it and they come back and they uh, and they make it that much better. Uh, they do mechanical engineering and design, industrial engineering and design, electrical engineering and design and software development and they are on the very cutting edge so uh, you want to take your uh, your idea or your product or your service to the next level and there is an engineering component involved voswin is who you talk to voswin.com check them out online it'll make a lot more sense than i just made tell them the knucklehead sent you <laughs> but thank you to sean yeah, for coming on you, board sean. as a sponsor sean is yeah. convinced that our demographic and our yeah. audience can benefit from his product yeah and if you have an idea yeah. and you're looking to move it forward voswin would be the place you'd want to start v-o-z-w-i-n voswin.com um, our uh, guest is uh, Mark Camacho. We're talking about uh, acting and films and, uh, well, we're talking about acting and films. Yeah. Well, also, we should talk about voice acting because you mentioned acting. right out of the yes. gate Mel Blanc yeah. and Chuck Jones. Yep. Mel Blanc being the voice and Chuck Jones being uh, the d- directorial and writing brains right. behind so many of the great, and Terry and I are huge fans. Yeah. We yeah. all grew up with those. That era. With, is with that. The, the Bugs Bunny cartoons and it, timeless comedic yeah. art. Uh, Timeless. Bugs, the Bugs Bunny cartoons, I think, are two cartoons what the golden era of movies was. I agree you know? 100%. And absolutely. they stand the test of time. Yeah. All my children, yeah. from my eldest, who's 32, to my youngest, who's 14, they all love 
those old uh, Mary Melody Warner Brothers cartoons. Absolutely, the, it, it's it, the, the the characterization, the writing is hysterical yeah. on it. I mean, yeah. uh, when you know Robin Hood Daffy and and and, <laughs> yeah. and you know a rat, rat, <laughs> rabbit seasoning, that's it doesn't get any better than no, that. No, it really Such no more friar for I am he for whom thou thinkest. I am Robin Hood. You're kidding me, oh, you're, 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 you're traveling clown. <laughs> I, I, it's it's classic, man. It's, it's I, I kill myself. Yikes! Yikes! Yeah. Away. <laughs> exactly. exactly. We all know it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not. Yeah. He doesn't have to shoot you now. <laughs> <laughs> Pronoun trouble. <laughs> it's uh, not. He doesn't have to shoot. Doesn't have to shoot me now. That's true. The, the writing is so clever, Mark. Absolutely. Pro, pronoun trouble. Yeah. In in a cartoon. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it, you and that's the joy of, a, of, yeah. of all those shows. You could watch it with a six year old, and they'll laugh for yeah. a different reason, and and you'll laugh for a different reason the bottom line is just funny so you've done a lot of voice acting over the years and cartoon voice acting as well yeah i mean uh, definitely that's that's kind of the, the bread and butter that pays the bills in between in between film and television shows different discipline obviously yeah yeah absolutely it's a, a different technique uh, a different approach uh, but you know, it allows you when you do go in for those film auditions, you're not gripping the stick so much because it's yeah, like, right. well, I know I got this gig coming up so I can afford to, to pay the mortgage repair they rent. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, you just let go. I mean, in, in, in those kind of things, it, my, <clears throat> my, uh, philosophy is like, if, if you can go bigger, you're too small, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Right. So <laughs> what, how does it, an actor approach that very practical question mark is how do I get through the year? You know what I mean? If if you're not if you're not on a series, if you're not Jennifer Aniston, if you're not, you know, even even, even like what Jesse was doing in Winnipeg, if sure. you're not on a regular gig like that, what? How do you? You know, you score a gig and it goes well, and you've got a couple of auditions. How how do you in February plan for? August. <laughs> uh, it, you know what, man? Uh, that's that's How did the you secret. Do that? I don't know. Wow. I, honestly, it's it's. There's no there's no uh, there's no magic theory. There's no well. This is what you have to do. It's you just kind of have to you know always have your 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 thumb in a bunch of different pies. Uh, you know, you, you you've got a voice gig here. You got a theater gig there. You got a film over there. You're doing a commercial gig over here. I mean, you guys know how it is. Uh, you know, you you do a bunch of radio spots. Uh, you know, stuff. So it's like, you know, you're kind of still going from one gig to the next. Right. Uh, but yeah, there's no there's no no magical. You're right. I mean, unless you unless you get that TV series. Yeah. That elusive TV series. Right. That I'm still looking for. <laughs> uh, you got you got to be doing you got to be doing it all. Knowing how difficult it can be, what was your reaction when your children both decided this was what they wanted to pursue for careers as well? You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, no, well, no. With Jesse, it was more obvious. Uh, he was, he was, uh, Pauline and I had to really rein him in. It, from the time he was six, wow. all he wanted to do was be on set, was be on set. So I figured, okay, you want to be on set? I'll do this. Uh, I'll, I'll get rid of that real quick. So I called the casting agent, Andrea Kenyon, and I was doing this scene with a birthday party. And I said, hey, you know, can I bring Jesse? Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. He'll be an extra in the background. I said, he'll be so bored. He'll just want to get the hell out of there. He did. He was, he was like, it was like he was in Disney World. Wow. You know, he was watching, he was watching the cameras, watching, and that's all he's wanted to do since he was six years old. Wow. Uh, with Sarah, it didn't really kick in until she was about 12. So I thought, you know, I had a little bit of hope for her. <laughs> when I thought maybe one day she's going to wake up and say, I want to be an architect. <laughs> but that, no, I, that, no, yeah. it never happened. It never happened. So they're both, they're both, uh, they're yeah. both, you know. And I, I don't know, um, their their career paths but jesse in particular is quite accomplished at this point is he not yeah he sure is uh he sure is he's uh he's he's done uh many more tv series than i have uh, uh but that, that's what you want as a parent yeah don't you you absolutely. want them to be more successful and to do better than you or or even to have them pay your rent for you? that, yeah, well yeah, that's what i'm that's what i'm banking yeah, that's, that's on that's that's retirement well listen plan. my son has gone into sports broadcasting that's okay. what he's studying and it's not what i would have wanted i wanted him to be an architect or or, or whatever <laughs> right but it's his passion well, and I'm, so i wish him well at it and uh, he told me that i can live in his basement yeah. when he when he makes it <laughs> and has a nice big home i mean i'm in uh, but yeah, you're right, Dad. I mean, that's 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 the bottom line. It's like, do they love doing what they're doing? Yeah. If they love doing what they're doing, then they're going to be happy, and and that's all there is to it. I mean, it's not necessarily all about you know the the, the bottom line of the I, bank account. I can't remember the name of the series that was shot in Winnipeg, but what 
what an opportunity for Jesse working with that cast and working Absolutely. on that. What was it called again, Mark? Less Than Kind. Less Than, Less kind. than kind. It was yeah. so brilliantly done. It sure was. And, and it, was, uh, it was so brilliantly shot, and he was brilliant in it, and he was surrounded by so many talented people. He really people. was. When you have when you have Mark McKinney, uh, you know, as the showrunner, yeah. uh, for your first real big gig, yeah. uh, and you've got Maury Chaikin playing your dad, yeah, uh, you know, you're surrounded by so many people, uh, Chris and Marvin, who created the show. Uh, the writing on it was just yeah, fantastic. Spectacular. And he had such a great character. It was it, it may as well have been been written for him. Yeah. They, they they did a great job in in doing that. And, and you're right, the cast that was uh, was incredible. How much do you take in when you're standing across from Rod Steiger and he's spitting in your face? Like, uh, what do you do? You learn something from that, or 100%. do you go home at night and go, ah, I gotta. Oh, it's all of those things. Is it's that right? Definitely all of those things. But but you have to be, you have to be careful because sometimes when you're in the scene with them, you have to be careful not to become uh, an audience member. Right. And and I caught myself doing that on yeah. a couple of occasions with with Paul Giamatti. Uh, he was doing this scene. We mentioned uh, Barney's version. Yeah. Uh, and he was doing this scene. And he was just so good. He came in and you know he's got Alzheimer's and you know he starts uh, he starts berating somebody in the scene and I had to go up to him and say what the hell is your problem? And he said, you know you, you're you're being an asshole. And he turned to me, and he looks, and he's and 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 he's and he just starts weeping. He says, "My best friend just died." Somebody was there, says, "Barney, that was that was a year ago," and and all of a sudden, I just watch him. My character is supposed to hate him at this moment, but I was just watching that performance, and I could feel myself welling. Like, Jesus, get a hold of yourself! <laughs> You're in the middle of a goddamn scene. What the hell is the matter with you? You're an actor. You know. So uh, well, that just tells you what a tremendous actor yeah, he absolutely. is. Eh? That well, he had a, a professional standing across from him, reacting like an audience yeah, member. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah, he was incredible. Fortunately, you know, we did a few more takes, and I, I could be a little bit more professional. <laughs> but it must be it must be hard. To, is it not to like? I, I guess you have to wash that out before somebody yells action. You you. It must be hard to not go. Jesus Christ, that's Robert De Niro. Yeah, you know because I mean. Even as a as a seasoned actor like yourself, it's you know, it's still it's you know, still Robert De Niro. It's still Robert De Niro. It's it's you know, it's still like you know a a, a minor league hockey defenseman standing in front of Guy Lafleur. I guess. You, you Are know, you, you calling Mark a minor league hockey defenseman? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's going to get up and leave the room. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but that, no, you, 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 a very poor choice of words. But you know, you know what I was trying to no, say. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's and 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 you're right. But but it's it's kind of like you know uh, uh, anybody who goes up against a giant. You know, if if you know if you're a boxer and you're going yeah. up against the heavyweight champ, uh, you're 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 you know you, you may be intimidated by them, but if you are, you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. Yeah. So uh, you you have to perform, and that's that's basically what it. I mean, and that and that the the awe. Uh, for me, anyway, it just it doesn't last. I mean, you yeah. make them go, "Wow, this is really cool," and then you go, "All right, yeah, I'm I'm in a scene with you know with with so and so, right?" Uh, um, uh, and 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 yeah, you have to you have to rise to 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 their level, and you have to you know stay on the screen with them. Do you remember your first very big experience like that? Do you remember the first actor where it was like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" Like it was yesterday. Okay, absolutely, John Candy. <laughs> John uh, Candy, uh, legendary John Candy. My very first. Yeah, I know. My, that's every. That's that's my reaction too. Uh, he. Everything you hope John Candy was, he was. You know, uh, I was doing a scene with him in a, in, a, in a movie that I'm sure he would turn over his grave if I mentioned it. It was, it was called Speed Zone, which was like Cannonball Run 3. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I was doing my first scene with, a, with you know, with name actors was with uh, John Candy and Eugene Levy, both giants. Uh, and as you know, we, and, and he was incredibly gracious. Uh, the director, who I don't remember uh, at the time, said, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about this scene. So uh, you know, come on over here." So you know, Eugene and John went over, and, and John said, well, "Wait a minute, uh, uh, Mark's in Mark's in this. Mark, come on over." I had like three lines, so you know, he he invited me over, and it was he it was just really kind. He was just very aware of you know, you know, you're a performer, you're you know, you're one of us. You're in this scene. You need yep. to be here. Yeah. And, you know, when we, when we broke for lunch, I, I didn't know the protocol at the time, so I started sort of following the extras to go get my boxed St. Hubert barbecue <laughs> lunch. And, uh, and he said, no, no, Mark, Mark, come, come on, come on, you're up here with us. Oh, so he came, wow. he, he sit here, and I sat with, with, uh, with Mr. Candy and, wow. and Mr. Levy. And had that's and amazing. I never, I never thought he got enough um, kudos for his, 
his acting skills were, I thought, were remarkable. There Incredible. are moments in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Absolutely. for example. Do you think this vehicle is roadworthy? <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> but, the, you know, and there, it, it, the, the comedic moments for sure are a no-brainer, but there are some very unbelievable dramatic moments, even in that Movie. In that movie yeah, in particular, yeah. towards where the end, where he's talking yeah. about he's got nobody to go exactly. home to for I mean, uh, Thanksgiving. Jesus Lord, the, per, the it gives me goosebumps. Me too. When yeah, I think he, about it, he tears your heart out. He's, yeah. he's he, you just you're just pulling for him. Yeah. I mean, even even in, in things like Uncle Buck, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. whereas uh, he's just in, incredible. Yeah. And 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 one of my favorites is Stripes. Yeah, uh, if you remember him in Stripes, yeah. Yeah, he's just. Uh, unbelievable JFK uh, when you think about you know the movie JFK and the role he did you would never say holy crap that yeah. was John Candy yeah, yeah. seriously eh? how, how did he end, how does that? John Candy end yeah. up in JFK and yeah. that's a testament to his acting You're skills right. absolutely we better do some more business <clears throat> why well, because <laughs> because they pay the bills that's why no I know and I I, just, I, I was just reveling in the the uh, you know we're so we did radio for so long. I have to keep reminding myself, et pas de panic. Yeah. We got all the time that we want or need. That's true, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's time to talk about... You want to talk about Mercen Automotive? I do, because I love the uh, the folks at Mercen, and I and I feel like I've been talking about them for so long. Well, we have. Because we have. For three generations. Yeah. We're we're on our third generation now. The Mercens, yeah. the Mercens run a tire shop, but that doesn't... That doesn't that no, 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 no. Doesn't it's a full even service garage, begin to describe yeah. it, yeah. and it doesn't describe the trust that they have with a lot of Montrealers and a lot of Montreal families. Have gen, you know, you fathers and sons have been taking their cars there for years, and uh, and also the honesty and the integrity that they have, and that's where that's how I first went there was years and years and years ago. I got taken by an unscrupulous mechanic and somebody said you should have taken it to the mercens one thing you'll never hear at mercen automotive is uh, well there's your problem right there that's gonna run you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah once we get the finesler yeah. out, it's, uh, boy you're in trouble yeah you don't hear that yeah. at mercen they will tell you uh, exactly what is wrong if anything yep. with your vehicle if there's nothing wrong with it they'll, they'll say something too. along the lines of you know what your brakes are good for another season, yeah. but in the fall, we're going to have to take another look at those. Those summer tires, they'll get you through this year, maybe part of next year too. But after that, we're going to have to have a look. Yeah. That's why people keep coming back to Mercen Automotive, because they're treated with honesty and decency. Yeah, if you don't know anything about cars, and I don't, and, and never have, and I don't think I ever will, you have to be able to trust somebody when they tell you there's something wrong and you have to have it looked after. And that's how the Mercens built their reputation. Check them out online at mercenauto.com. Mark, do you have a favorite film of all time? Uh, I, I do. I, I, it's, and I'm not. I'm not in it. No, no. I just you know movies. <laughs> uh, it's it's they're they're pretty they're pretty. Uh, they're, I have two that come to mind. Uh, there's uh, the Princess Bride, and mm. there's uh, Braveheart. Uh, oh, so wow. they're trying to yeah. opposite ends of the yeah, same. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, no. I can. I've I've seen the Princess Bride dozens yeah. of times, and uh, uh, got to have a. a one of you talk about being starstruck. This it really doesn't happen to me very often, but this this did. I, I got to spend an evening with Carrie Elways, which was Jeez. which was yeah. It was, wow. it, was in, it was it was just so incredible. I was invited to uh, <clears throat> a rap party. It was one of the producers of X Men, and uh, he you know we uh, Pauline and I were invited, so we went over there and. Uh, he said, you know, I'm not sure who's going to come I mean, other than, you know, Carrie. Uh, Carrie called and he's like, did you know Carrie? I, I didn't know who he was referring to. And he goes, oh, he's in a TV series uh, here uh, shooting. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm in that too. And he goes, you know, I, I went, oh, Carrie always. And he said, yeah, yeah he's going to be here. So, I saw, so on the outside, I was going, oh, great, yeah, great. Yeah. And on the inside, I'm looking at Pauline going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's going to be here, yeah. <laughs> so I had just finished reading his book, uh, uh uh, as you wish. Uh, if you like The Princess Bride, you have to read his book. Yep. It's, it's the making of from the time Rob Reiner interviewed him to anyway. And, and he walked in and, and we just chatted all night. It was fabulous. And the producer said, you know, you two have something in common. He said, uh, you know, Mark played Nixon uh, and uh, Carrie always wrote uh, Nixon and Elvis, the, uh, the movie Nixon wow. and Elvis, which was uh, fabulous. And and uh, and we just you know he said, oh my god that was you that was you know that was fantastic and we just spoke the whole night and as I was leaving and, and as you know he, we were 
both leaving to go somewhere else. And I just said, like, I, I, before we go, I, I have to, I have to do this. Uh, <laughs> Princess Bride is, is my favorite movie. And he, he put down his drink. He went, come here. Oh and he gives gosh. me a big hug, and I'm pretty sure I sobbed in his arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly certain, I, I get, I, like like a 14 year old girl. <laughs> so, yeah. that is a fantastic story. Um, speaking speaking of Nixon, which which you played, I'm I'm a political junkie, and I'm currently watching um, uh, currently watching a series on uh, on HBO on Crave or Crave, as I like to call it. <laughs> Um, the, uh, He's so the pretentious. Yeah. So pretentious. <laughs> you don't subscribe to Crave? <laughs> um, and uh, Kiefer Sutherland is playing FDR. Oh. And that, that's a massive challenge, as would be playing Nixon. And my question to you is, how do you approach it so you don't do rich little you know what i mean yes i really know what you mean uh, the last thing I, I, you know he, he was a brilliant impersonator but you want to make him a real guy I mean, yeah uh, so you know i i, I tried to I, I read uh i read a couple of biographies uh I, you know i revisited some watergate stuff but funnily enough when i was in high school i used to do impersonations and and right? uh, i would do richard nixon uh, but i would be doing you know rich little doing richard yeah. right right but uh but i said now i have to make this not very cartoony uh, so, you know, I tried to, to, to make him as, as real as possible without going into caricature, but I also had the, the added benefit of having, you know, an Academy Award nominated makeup team and three and a half hours of prosthetic makeup. So oh. they did, they did uh, three quarters of my job for me. Does that time. help as an actor? Like when you, you know, when you look in the mirror, you show up on set and then you go to wardrobe and you go to makeup, like... And you're standing on a set that's, you know, sort. Of, does that sort of, uh, help you get? I hate to say in the mood, but you know what I mean. Does it oh, help yeah, that sure. add to the character? Definitely. You look in the mirror and you go, "Fuck, I'm Nixon." Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. especially after if I guys. had a nickel. <laughs> I, I never look in the mirror and see Brad Pitt, though. I don't know why that doesn't happen, or George Clooney. No, it's I, I look in the mirror and see Richard Nixon. Uh, no, I mean, they, it, definitely, there's no question. Uh, by the time they got done with me, uh, I was, you know, I'd, I'd get there at, you know, 3.15 in the morning, and at 6.30, I'd, I'd walk out, and, and it would be, you know, it'd be Richard Nixon, except yeah. it would be Richard Nixon in, you know, jean shorts and a T-shirt. Right. <laughs> walk right. So the culture shock was a little bit funny when, uh, when I would walk out of the makeup trailer. But no, my, my, my daughter came with me on set uh, one time, and, and, and she just slept in my trailer for three hours, and I, I came in and woke her up. And you can imagine, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> you know, there's a big bulbous nose in front of her. Uh, but no, it definitely does. When you get on set and you see, you know, when you yeah. walk onto the set, yeah. there's the South Lawn of the White House. Yeah, so, wow, it's uh, it's pretty. That cool. that helps put you in the headspace, does it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, d definitely. You know, as soon as as soon as I sort of step into uh, the character's shoes, really, uh, right. you, it, it definitely helps. It, no it, it, I always wondered about that. I'm a massive fan of the West Wing. And and one of the things about watching the West Wing is you forgot they weren't in the White House. Yeah, <laughs> that they were on a soundstage. Oh no, I love it. Was that show. So good, it was brilliant. It was, uh, it, watching the West Wing, and it's just just it, from the theme song in. Yeah, it's just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's hard to find writing like that too. Right? It's yeah. Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah it's, it's, everybody everybody dreams about being in a, in an Aaron Sorkin written uh, written show. You know, this is. Uh, that dialogue, that rapid fire yeah. dialogue, is just incredible. Um, have you ever been on uh, a set where, as you're getting on set, you think, "Oh my god, this director is such a dick. What am I going to do?" <laughs> <laughs> because Absolutely. At, 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 from Absolutely. what I understand, I've never. I don't, I don't think I've ever. We've never been on a set, have we? Dan? I don't think so. No. And from what I understand, there's a vibe that's created by the guy running the picture. Right, the guy that who's directing sure. the picture, sure. because he's the guy that hires the crew, and there's a, you know, we are all we all know. Uh, if you're a movie fan, you know about uh, Clint Eastwood, sure, who doesn't yell action that's and right. doesn't yell cut. He just okay, and that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Yeah. We move on, and there's a there's a so apparently a serenity to his sets. Yeah, uh, there's there's a couple of times where, you know, you're on set. There was, there was one movie where I, I know that the director campaigned hard not to have me in. I know because the casting agent had told Shit. me later. Wow. Uh, and and uh, you just, you, you know, he was like, oh, I got to deal with this guy. 
<laughs> That's a nice and so, yeah, you just wow. you don't go over there. But it, you uh, you literally are acting in self defense at this point. Wow. Uh, so you know you're just trying to go about it. But it, it it doesn't happen very often. I mean, I've been lucky in that the directors, for the most part that I've worked with, have all been very very gracious and really kind. That and, and it's it's true that um, by and large, um, most people you know are. When you get to the George Clooney, De Niro level, there's those people have nothing to prove to anybody, <laughs> and, they, and they're, there's just a yeah. yeah sort of a calmness and a kindness about them, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. They're they're you know they're just there to do their job. They they, they you're absolutely right. They don't have anything to prove. Uh, there's always pressure because right. they have, they've got they've got to uh, to, to deliver. Uh, but you know they they know they know their stuff. You know there's nothing there's nothing more reassuring than sitting on set with a director as they're they're lighting the shot and the director's doing a crossword puzzle. Right, his 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 uh, his, his work was done. Can you watch a movie uh, as a a movie fan? You know you know what I'm saying. Like hockey coaches watch hockey games in a different way. Yeah. Do you know? And I would imagine actors watch a favorite movie and you must see lighting and direction and all yeah. editing. Like, can you, can you watch it without dissecting it? Uh, I, I, can, I can, I can, especially if I'm, if I'm really loving the movie, if, if I'm, if I'm a huge fan of something, like if I go to see like when, when, when the Harry Potter films comes, we're all Harry Potter freaks right. at, at, at my house. Uh, I'm not, I'm not watching for that at all. I'm right. just, I'm, I'm, I'm just a nerd and I'm a fan and I'm just watching. <clears throat> but if something is is so brilliant, uh, you know when you're when you're watching something, you can't help but going, "Oh my god, that's a brilliant performance!" or "What a great shot!" that kind of thing. So yeah, that does definitely creep in. Uh, so uh, it's it's kind of both. It's kind of both. I can I can definitely watch and uh, and just watch and, and and be a fan and not and not think about anything. Um, but but you know then there's the other side too. Are there, are there classic movies that moved you as a you know I mentioned Guess Who's Coming to Dinner before and mm -hmm. you know there. Massive. I don't know why, because it was before my time. A massive Spencer Tracy fan. Yeah, yeah. There. I mean, one of my favorites. Uh, and I'll, I'll sit and watch with the with the kids. Uh, is Double Indemnity. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, that's. Of course. I mean, you, yeah. you know, you've got Fred McMurray in there, yeah. and and it's 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 just such a great. And I I love those. Uh, I I just love the banter. Yeah. It's like. Uh, all right, honey. Why don't you come on over and I'll see you. I'll see you a little bit later. What if I start crying in your arms? And what if I, you know? And it's like, and you go, they're so fucking hokey. There, but there was there was a lot of overacting back then, wasn't there? I, I, I guess, but it you just know? sort of worked for the yeah. period. It was just you know when you got you, you, there was there was a rhythm. You know, you got Cagney coming. Yeah. And going, All right, we're gonna come in from the front door, and you guys are gonna come in, in the back, and you start shooting, and you don't stop, <laughs> and you don't stop until I tell you. And it was just a, no, 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 that, that kind of thing. Out of and, my way, toots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you just watch it and. He's like, this is awesome, you know. But and and then you've got you know the the, the Clark Gable yep. sitting in the same So says he must started to do. I can't like, I can't watch anything with Fred McMurray without waiting for Uncle Charlie. To <laughs> exactly, <laughs> my three sons. Ah, seen Steve, the, thing. the boys, I tell you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I like doing is looking up old actors from when we were kids, guys we saw, and, and women too, when we were kids. And I look up, because I'm, I'm a um, World War II buff, I look up at their war service, and it's amazing the number of famous actors mm. who served in World War II. And, and I probably the most prominent would have been Jimmy Stewart, who was a war hero. Yeah. He was, a, he was a, I believe, a squadron leader. Yeah. Wow. He yeah, flew, uh, flew B-24s, multiple combat missions, and... Uh, and just uh, anybody and everybody from that era, from those 1960s and 70s TV shows that we uh, grew up watching, they, they served. B. Arthur Ma served. She was a Marine. I didn't know that. Maude was a Marine. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't screw with B. Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and voluntarily. I mean, yeah. They, they, you know, they, they weren't drafted. And they, didn't, yeah. you know, they, they, they just chose went. to go and Yeah, well, that was that generation. Don Rickles, sir, I think Don Rickles was in the Battle of Okinawa serving on a submarine tender. That's somehow funny. Yelling at Tojo yeah. from the ocean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Brooks. Wait. I'm reading a Mel, a Mel Brooks's autobiography. He, yep. he was Battle Rangers of the Bulge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe he was a combat engineer. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he was incredible. Do you do you have to shift your focus as you get older, Mark, in terms of what you either pursue or you know that Andrea calls you for, or you know I, what I mean? Sure. I mean, you know, uh, you 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 try to say, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror. Oh, I could still read forty, uh, yeah. but yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. you know, the the uh, 
<clears throat> the um, the younger kind of actiony cop roles don't yeah. don't come a, don't come around as often. You know, the 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 the, the dad of older kids starts okay. happening a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, there's, there's, you know, there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. Are now. you at the, are you at the point where, uh, especially in Montreal? Somebody like Andrea Kenyon goes, oh, yeah, Mark, will, that's perfect for Mark. Call Mark. Uh, I mean, yeah, she'll, she'll, uh, she, she will definitely bring me in for the audition. Okay, gotcha. Um, uh, she, and, and occasionally we'll get a direct offer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does that's happen. Nice. It's not, it's, it's not, it doesn't happen all the time. Right. Most of the time it doesn't. But, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, once you've been around uh, long enough, uh, they, they, they'll definitely give you the benefit of the doubt at the very least. And say, you know what? I'm not sure, but let's bring him in anyway because, you know, he's, he, he's pretty good at what he does. And uh, at the very least, it'll, it'll give them an option. This is <clears throat> terribly indulgent of me, but it's our podcast. So what the hell? <laughs> indulge away. Uh, indulge away. I, uh, now that I'm retired and I'm out in British Columbia, a lot of things are shot in British Columbia. I would like to try being fat guy on bench. Do you think, like, is is it as horrible as I think it is that you're on set for 14 hours and then someone comes and puts a fedora on your head and says, walk left to right here? Is that what that is? Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Depends, okay. how, depends how, how badly you want to be on the set. I'm I just, I'm fascinated by movies and movie sets. He doesn't want to go so he can I, say, yeah. I'm in the movies. No, he no, wants no. to go to observe. I just, oh, well, I just be part wanna, of. I, I would like one time to be on a movie set and have somebody say to me just you know okay extras walk in front of this window just because i'm fascinated by the process you know i think i would spend a lot of time watching the different people do the different things staying out of the way keeping my mouth shut because i know you have to behave but it, but a lot of people say to me oh you're gonna you'll hate that it's a 20 hour day for two seconds and well, if it, no, I think I think maybe you'd love it then. If that's, really, if, eh? yeah. If, if if you if you you know really want to be on a film set, especially a show that you love, uh, then I would really think you should do it. Yeah, it's a long day, but if yeah. you're fascinated by everything that's I going am. on and watching, then you'll have a great time. And, and he's an actor member, so there you go. All, Absolutely. All, all you got to do is put a picture up on you know some of these extras websites. I think right. Yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, you you go to a casting agent. Yeah, uh, you bring a you bring a headshot, bring yeah. an eight by ten headshot, yeah. and and uh, make sure it looks like you, and it's yeah. not from nineteen seventy four. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like, uh, well, I f I figure for extras too, especially in the, some things, the older the better, probably. Yeah, hey. my 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 uh, my in laws used to used to get tons of, uh, yeah. of extra work. Uh, yeah. yeah, so so yeah, that definitely you just go and and. Uh, uh, you know, sign up with a, with a casting right. agency and, and hopefully they call you in. Are you still fascinated by movie sets? A hundred percent. Yeah. Do you still get that buzz? I do. I have, every day that I get up to go to work, uh, uh, be it on a film set or in a studio, yeah. is a great day. I Because I, Ted and I, you know, we're in radio for so long and God help me, even though I'm retired, a studio door opens and I, I get the butterflies yeah. and the, the, the buzz, it never goes away. It's, it's in not. there somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, and that's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm always saying I don't ever see myself retiring. No. I just don't see it. I well, mean, why? slow down, maybe. Sure. You know, I don't feel like going in for that role, that maybe. Yeah. But retiring, I, I just don't see it. I, I love what I do too much. The, is are you leaning more voice acting these days, or it doesn't matter? Uh, I, I'm leaning to where whoever will hire me. Okay, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> work uh, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, r right now, uh, right now, I'm, I'm doing a play, but I'm also in the studio uh, during the days. Uh, so you know, and if a film role comes up, then I'm going to you know, jump at that too. Geez, we didn't even talk about that stage acting. You've done yeah. a lot of that, well, and, I, there, and there's it, another different discipline. We should talk about the the stage acting, the current play that Mark is in as we're recording this, and uh, we should tell Mark about the UPS store because I'm sure he'll be thrilled to hear all about it. Well, I think that Mark and David <laughs> Drucker probably go way back, do they? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about the UPS store. David Drucker and the UPS store in Canada are one of our sponsors that we have to thank again for coming back for another season of the Terry and Ted podcast. Don't know if you've ever been into this store, but I've told the story many, many times when uh, we were uh, getting ready to uh, move to British Columbia and there were extra things that we needed to get across the country and the moving truck was already gone. 
the UPS store uh, comes to the rescue. If you have a small business and you need to send out 20 packages or you need to package up something and you're looking for packaging and boxes and labels, you need to send faxes, you need to print things, whatever it is your business needs. And even if it's not a business, even if it's a time to get uh, a birthday present out to Aunt Effie in Canmore, uh, they can handle that too. That's what the UPS store has been doing so well for a very long time. And what I like about them is there are all kinds of locations across the country and they're all owned locally. So you end up dealing with an independent entrepreneur who owns his own business, whose business is to make sure your business is going to benefit from what the UPS store does. Highly, highly recommend them. Can't uh, say enough nice things about them and can't thank David Drucker enough uh, for uh, the uh, the uh, support of the podcast. Uh, UPSstore.ca. UPS Store Canada. Thank you very much, Ted. I always get the website wrong. I'm sure David's thrilled about that. I actually had a great Aunt Effie. Did you really? Yeah, Effie and Basil. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I, I had an Aunt Effie, uh, Aunt, Aunt Effie and Uncle Herbie in our... In our I don't uh, even know what Effie is short for. No. Neither so, do I. It, it sounds like characters off of Bewitched. That was Gladys Kravitz. Yeah. But, yeah. But before I, I just gotta I gotta give you guys kudos. I know I'm in I'm in studio with real pros. So that segue into UPS was unbelievable. <laughs> that was that was fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I'm, right. I'm, yeah, That's I'm, a high compliment. I'm in, thank I, you. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Mark, do you have a favorite actor? Uh, man, I got a lot of them. Okay. Uh, is there one that you look, is, is there a guy who you look at and go, I'd like to be more like him or, or, or who maybe you compare yourself to? Because I'll tell you who you remind me of, J.K. Simmons. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's a hell of a compliment. And you know what? And, and here's the backhanded part of the compliment. <laughs> because with J.K. Simmons, for the longest time, I didn't know his name, but I knew that guy. That guy. That guy. Yeah. Do you yeah. get a lot of, you're I, the guy, you're, I know you, you're the you're guy from guy. the thing? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I've, had, I've, had, I've, had people, I've had people come up to you, it's, it's funny, I've had people come up to me and say, I am, I'm a huge fan of your yeah. work, thank you so much, can, can you sign this for me? I say, yeah, sure, and I'll, I'll sign it very yeah. quickly, now, that's, that's so great, thank you so much, what, what, what is your name again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then somebody, somebody will come up and go, you're, you're somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen not, you. Not if you have to ask. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, we get that in radio. I, you know that, that voice. I know that. Where do I know? Where yeah. do I know yeah. that voice? But from? I, I think, I think you, you must take that as a compliment, Mark, because that you're such a great character actor, and and you know have worked in so many different roles and so many different things that you disappear in that in in all of your roles. Um, yeah. No, yes? I, I'm lucky in that I'm I'm every man. Yeah. I can I can be your mailman. I yeah. Can, I can be the detective. I can be the school teacher. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't have the burden of good looks. <laughs> so, so well, yeah. matinee idol, right? Yeah, yeah, you would there never you be go. matinee there idol. You go. There you go. Can yeah, you can you tell me what what it was like to work on a Mammoth film? I mean, David Mamet is a legendary. You, you say David Mamet to anybody in theater, in arts, in literature, or whatever, and they all have the same reaction. What What was that like? Uh, it was surreal, man. It was unbelievable. Must have been. I mean, uh, funnily enough, I, I spent twelve days on that set, Jesus. and seven of them were spent lying on the floor unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yes. Yeah. I. I, I the, 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 was, the movie was called The Heist. Yeah. And it was you know Gene Hackman and Danny DeVito and uh, I mean, Delroy Jesus. Lindau were 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 robbing this jewelry store and i was you know the guard at the jewelry store right. and it's the scene starts out i've got to buy coffee and walk and blah 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 anyway so uh, I, <laughs> I, I i i'm working with mammon we've all you know we all done like american buffalo and you know in in in, in theater school and whatnot in, in awe uh, by him i was in the studio one day and I, I found out i'd booked the role and uh my my agent calls me in, in the studio and you know i, I pick up the phone and she goes, you got to get to set as fast as possible david mammon needs you on set now, I don't know, not too many actors get the phrase, David Mamet needs you on set. Uh, so I said, okay, well, I, I should be done here in about an hour. So, okay, get to set immediately. So, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, holy shit, David Mamet needs me on set. <laughs> so I jump in the car and I race over to the set. I don't park. I run in. I park beside a fire hydrant. Who gives a shit? I'm just like, walk, walk in. The second AD sees me. Oh, Mark, great. You're here. David, no, David wants to see you right away. Great. So obviously they rush me into, into costume through makeup. And I rush me onto set. And I get in there and Dave's like, oh, good, Mark, you're here. Okay, there's a good chance we're going to see your shoes in this shot. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, Damn, well, shit. good thing I was around <laughs> because nobody else could have put those, yeah. could have laid down on the floor and, you know, showed the shoes. Nobody like wears me. those shoes like nobody. me. Boy. That, and, and that, I mean, uh, Lindo, great, an unbelievable actor, Gene Hackman yeah. is like the Da Vinci of, of acting. Like, talk about a master at Absolutely. work. Absolutely, it must have been unbelievable to watch that guy it, work. It really was. I mean, ever since ever since I saw Young Frankenstein the first time, where he plays the blind man, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I, I was I always said, oh, "Please, God, let me have the opportunity to to tell him how much I appreciated him." And that's it. And and yeah, it, 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 we've all seen you know Papa Doyle and and and, and the French Connection and Mississippi Burning and the guys the guys Jesus, For, I forgot about all these. Titles. Yeah, no, he, he, it's, it's, it's the list goes on and on. And he was uh, he was at Craft getting a, a coffee and and I said, oh, here's my chance. And I so walked up to him and ordered a coffee. I said, by the way, I, I look, man, I, I just have to tell you, uh, uh, years ago I was I was really depressed. I was in a horrible place. And I went to see Young Frankenstein, and in your scene as the blind man, I said I I wept with laughter. And he's like, oh, thanks. I, I don't get that very often. Really? Yeah. And I was I was That's, so delighted that wow. I didn't say, you know, you know, wow, you are great as Papa Doyle. Yeah, we everybody. Yeah. But uh, but he said, yeah, I I, I I I begged Mel Blank. Is that right? Uh, Mel, 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 Brooks. Uh, Mel Brooks. I, yeah. I begged Mel Brooks for anything in that movie, and he said, oh well, yeah, sure, here you go. What's the name of the movie? The uh, the submarine movie he did with Denzel Washington. You oh, want to yeah. see two yeah, acting? Yeah, yeah. Red, oh my god, uh, Crimson Tide. Crimson, Crimson, Crimson yeah, Tide. Yeah, yeah. The clash of two unbelievable actors yeah. together. That that's another one that gives me goosebumps yeah, I when know. I think about no. those performances. Yeah, absolutely. You watch them and, and, and that that was one what I could I could, you know, as I was laying on the floor unconscious brilliantly, <laughs> yeah. uh, watching Gene Hackman, uh yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Did you see much of uh what was Mordecai Richler involved at all on Bar Barney's version? I cuz I know writers are not allowed, but Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't I never saw. No. Uh, no, I I was uh Another great movie by the way. Excuse me for interrupting mm -hmm. if you're Montrealer, you have to see that movie. Yeah, if if not just for Paul Giamatti's performance, yeah. he's yeah. he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, uh, as well as uh, um, Mimi uh, Mini Driver. Yeah, as, as, and as, you as, uh, and and me. And you. God, I'm, yes. I'm fantastic <laughs> in this movie. If yeah, you got to go see it. Mark Camacho was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Mark Camacho. <laughs> exactly. Just ask him. <laughs> My yeah. And I, I, I was talking about you know Paul Giamatti and I looking alike. We were having we were having lunch on set, and he, he pulls one of these. You know, he's, he's looking at me. And he's <laughs> having his lunch. He keeps looking up. And he's like, you know, we really do look alike. You know, and 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 he's like, you 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 know, you could uh, you could play my brother. And I said, yeah, I, I could. I said, but you have a brother who acts. He has an acting brother. And then he says, oh, yeah, but he's really good looking. I said, oh, well, I, <laughs> thanks, Paul. I really appreciate that. And, no, 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 I didn't mean it that way. Yeah. Have you spent any time in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I, I did the pilot season thing. Uh, we would. Uh, I mean, that doesn't really exist anymore. But with everybody self taping and sending right. them on, uh, sending your auditions into uh, in, um, by email. But no, I would go to L.A. for you know two, uh, two three months at a time and just you know pound the pavement and you know go into auditions and Is stuff. Is it hell? It's not pleasant. Uh, mm. It's it can be really depressing if you well, if you let it get to you. Really, you're sitting there. For, you're you're there for one purpose, uh, and it's and it's it's expensive as hell too. Because, yeah. you know, you're renting a car. You're you're, you're, yeah. you're uh, renting an apartment. You're not making any money. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I would sit there um, uh, day in day out. You know, waiting for my agent to call me with an audition. And the the one great part of my day was when uh, an actor who I became friendly with, a guy named Dominic Lucchese Jr., whose dad was in The Sopranos, who played mm -hmm. Junior, uh, and we would we would hang out. And one day he comes up to me and he says, uh, "Oh, by the way, um, uh, what are you doing this afternoon?" I was like, "Nothing." And he said, "Oh, get, my, a buddy of mine needs me to help him move something. Do, do you mind?" I said, "My buddy Fish needs to blah blah blah." I said, "Oh, okay, fine, buddy, whatever." So we get in my car and we start driving up into the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> Saying, well, who the hell is your friend? <laughs> and I said, yeah, no. And he kept mentioning my buddy Fish. And so we get to these iron gates, and the gates sort of open up, and there's you know one Ferrari, two Ferraris. Like, who the hell is this? And then Lawrence Fishburne oh, came Christ. out, and and he's like, hey, Fish, how's it going? <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like, oh, thanks, guys. I got you can help me. So, so yeah, I was, was expecting it. Abe Vigoda. That's what I mean. yeah. <laughs> when you say Fish, yeah. that's who I which, think of. which would have been equally as impressive. Yeah, yeah. For today yeah anyway. no kidding. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, who ended up being the nicest guy? We we sat and sat in his house. As an day. actor, it must be very cool, though. I I mean, I I've, I've been lucky enough to I've had lunch on the Paramount lot. And I spent a lot of time, you know, going, 
Jesus Christ, we're on the Paramount lot. You know, they, if you're a movie fan, it, it must be pretty cool it's to, really to be cool. part of it, it, it for, really even is. for a couple of months. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and, and, and even when you're in it, yeah. uh, you have to stop and look around and go, man, this is incredible. I, uh, uh, talking about the, the being on the lot, um, I did a movie with, um, with Brad Garrett here, if you remember yep. him from Everybody Loves Rain. Yeah, of course. He won a, an Emmy Award for his portrayal of Jackie Gleason. And I played his best friend, and we became good fr- good buddies. And uh, when I went to L.A., I gave him a call. I said, oh, why don't you come on down to the set? And, uh, you know, you can, you can sit, and, you know, they were doing a taping of Everyone Loves Raymond. Everybody Loves Raymond. So he, he met me, and we went in, and it was really cool, man. He's just going, and it's, it's, I mean, you know, there's Ray Romano and, yeah. and doing, doing his thing and, and uh, you know, just sitting, watching the whole making of this. Yeah. And then, you know, going into the commissary. He's like, ah, come on, we'll go into the commissary. And sitting there, and <clears throat> he's like, oh, hey, guys. I turn around, the whole cast of friends comes in beside and sits there. And then George Clooney walks in. And you're like, yeah, this is my world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is my world. Next I, week. <laughs> I, I love that you're not uh, sanguine about it, that you, know, you, that you still think that that's cool. It is. Because that's I, cool. I mean, it is. It's yeah. super cool. I you mean, know? you know, a, a week later, I was, you know, sitting in my kitchen doing the dishes in my underwear. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, wow. <laughs> right back I was, to earth. I, yeah, I was, I was a big shot there for about seven minutes. Those were the days <laughs> yeah. last week. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is it time again? Is we got one left. Yeah, one, you got to yeah. talk about. Well, um, I, I, it's this is uh, this is kind of good news. Uh, well, it's it's all good news. Um, I I want to uh, again thank uh, Matt Labonneur for coming back. They've been uh, a sponsor uh, of the podcast and in my radio life, they were always very very supportive. And to Norm and and uh, Val and Anthony and everybody at the uh, head office. Um, this is a, a, a really cool offer that they've decided for the listeners of the podcast. They've got a promo code for you. So if you've been looking to change your mattress, if you've been sleeping on the same mattress for a long time, uh, or you've been putting it off, uh, you want to go to a Matlab owner store. Um, because just the way they do business, another family run company that really gets what they're trying to do. They're passionate about a great night's sleep. They're up to all of the, uh, up to date on all of the latest details in sleep technology, which I didn't even know was a thing until I met the people from MetLab on Earth. And they're offering a promo code of, uh, 5% on whatever you buy. It's re- on, re- on sale stuff, regular stuff, mattresses, pillows, doesn't matter what you buy. You get a 5% discount if you mention the promo code TEAR05. And there's one for you, Ted. Oh. Ted05. I wanted to be 07. Okay, you can't be. Don't no, do it. Okay, Ted05. Ted05. Ted05, Ted05. Ted That's, That's pretty cool. Do that. they still have sleep consultants? They do. At the I, Met Lab Honor? Yeah. I could audition for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could get, get that. No, nobody I'd, sleeps like you do. I'd nail that role, boy. <laughs> You're sleeping man. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Direct book. No audition necessary. That's right. <laughs> That's uh, my friends at Matt Labonneur. There are locations all over the greater Montreal area. You can find them online. And again, you can use the promo code online or in store. Ter05, Ted05, our thanks to Matt Labonneur. Geez, we've kept you an awful long time, Mark. Do you and ever we get could tired keep you of, another hour, too. Yeah, yeah this I, is I, fun. I'm really enjoying... Uh, is there any names that you haven't dropped <laughs> that, that you'd like to drop? Well, he nice. hasn't dropped any. We're just dragging well, them out of Christ, them. Yeah. You know, Brando, <laughs> <laughs> Hackman, yeah. De Niro, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I, Jesus. I, 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 get, I'm, 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 I get embarrassed, you know, because you I, I, I have, I, I'm lucky to have worked with these the, with the Giants, but but I'm happy to keep dropping them, man, and we won't yes. be able to get out the door. You know, I was like, what's that? Oh, these are com- the names on Camacho drop. Just move this. I'll move that Kate Blanchett over there. There you go. <laughs> Has uh, anybody said to you, come on, let's go for dinner? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, uh, well, speaking of Kate Blanchett, uh, I did a movie uh, that she was nominated for an Oscar for. She was brilliant. She played Bob Dylan. Uh, oh, and, uh, wow. It was called I'm Not There. Um, um, unfortunately, not enough people saw it, which is probably why she didn't win. But I played her manager at the time, and yeah, she invited me to her. Uh, she invited me to her kid's birthday party that uh, was wow. there. Uh, she was uh, the the most gracious. Uh, you, I mean, the, the Dylan makeup. She was in there for for a while getting that done, and, and she's she's so incredibly naturally beautiful. So I saw her one one time only in the, in the the month that I worked with her. One time only show up and set you know you know with the onset with a beautiful summer dress, and I was wow. 
you look like a woman today. <laughs> she's, she's, she's very, very, very nice. But this is how gracious she was. I mean, uh, Jesse is, as I'm sure most kids are, huge fans of Lord of the Rings. Right? Mm-hmm. And she plays the, the, the elf, you know, queen. And, and I had mentioned this to her about two weeks in because I, you know, I said, oh, my son would love to. Oh, I'd, I'd love to meet him. I'm oh, sure, yeah, that'd so be fantastic. Sweet. We had shot a 14-hour day, and I, and I called. Uh, we were about to wrap, and I called Polly and said, bring Jesse to the set right now. We're going to wrap in about an hour. So they waited there, and you know, after 14, 15 hours, she was exhausted, and they said, all right, that's a wrap. And then when she got in, you know, the, her car came, picked her up, and, and brought her back to base camp. And I was like, oh, oh well, you know, it's not going to. And so I said to Jesse, I said, oh, you know, she should really be maybe another time. I said, oh, all right, no problem. He wasn't too disappointed, and that was fine. And, and then I see her car coming back onto set, still in costume. She gets it. She comes running up. She goes, Mark, I'm so sorry. You said your son was here to see me. Uh, wow. Is he is he still here? I said, yeah, he's over there. Cry. Yeah, that's how, I mean, she didn't have to do that no. at all. No. I mean, she, that was a long ass day and she came back and she spoke to him and, uh, you know, took pictures uh, and he was just, he, he, he was thrilled. There's something special about actors, uh, actresses, are we still allowed to say actresses? I'm not sure. Um, uh, there's something very special about performers who understand the role that they've created means so much to so many people. And they they don't take that as a burden. They see it as a privilege. And they 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 want to do things like what she did for Jesse. Yeah. That, there's something really impressive about that, isn't there, Mark? Absolutely. And and when they go that extra mile, yeah. uh, I mean, it's one thing to sign somebody's autograph or yeah. whatever, but when you go out of your way uh, like that, literally, uh, it, it just, it makes, it makes somebody's year. Yeah. You know, you, they're just so... Uh, uh, and that was instilled. Uh, that was instilled in 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 Jesse as well. I think he he took a, he took something from that when he was in Winnipeg. He couldn't really walk down the street because yeah. that show was so popular. Yeah. <clears throat> and there was a, a woman who uh, who you know came to uh, saw him in line for for something, and she went over to him. She just said, "Oh, it, it means so much to me." And she burst into tears. Aww, and she yeah. said, "And and he came and he put his arm around her, and it, you know he he stayed with her for like fifteen minutes because oh, I've been going through a hard time this year, and Aww. and I was proud of my son. You know, he's like, That's wow, he he's, should have he's, been. Uh, he didn't just say, "Oh, well, nice to meet you," yeah. and leave. Yeah. He, he stuck around, so that yeah. was great. We uh, would be remiss if we didn't <clears throat> congratulate Mark on his uh, successful show business marriage. You don't see that a lot in show <laughs> business. Marriages last yeah. as long as years. As of the date of this recording was it yesterday it was your anniversary 30, 34 years oh wow 34 years congratulations Mark and, and his uh, lovely bride pauline little uh who was also an also actor. yeah and, uh, yeah are we allowed to say actress <laughs> I, is it, I, I do. I, I okay, do. well, there you I, go. I, I'm from that yeah. era, so I, I write me a letter if you want. She, but, I, you know. I don't think she Kath, would be a Catherine Hepburn was an actress. You like know what? Side. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. 34 yeah. years is amazing. And, and yeah. uh, boy, yes. oh, boy, yeah. that's something. Good for you, man. By the, did Kate Blanchett play Catherine Hepburn? She did. In um, um, yes. Aviator? Yes. The Aviator. Exactly. In, in, yeah. The with, Aviator. And I remember that when you were telling the Kate Blanchett story, I remember seeing or reading about the Howard Hughes movie and DiCaprio and blah, 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 and Kate Blanchett was going to play Catherine Hepburn, and I'm such a massive Catherine Hepburn fan, I thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster. Nobody <laughs> can play Catherine Hepburn. She was brilliant in it. She she's, was absolutely brilliant. She's a freak of nature. Yeah, she, she really is. She's, is. she's a chameleon. Yeah. She really is. A, and, and and she's so human, you know? Yeah, it's so she, kind. She, she did a scene uh, that, you know, again, you're sort of watching, trying not to be in awe, and she was just so... At, at Bob Dylan. Yeah. Uh, and she was fabulous. And then she she asked uh, she asked for another take. She said, "Can I that, that that was that was dreadful? Can I have another one?" And I said, "Kate, uh, I w- uh, there I know so many people who would love to have your dreadful. Yeah, define yeah. dreadful. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah." And she's like, "Oh, you know how it is when you just don't." But it's it. it's it, isn't that part of what makes the greats the greats? Yeah, they, sure. They, they just know. Right they, and yeah, they 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 know they've got they've got something else and they can give a little bit extra right. and they want to do it. It's and, never that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Um, I, we should talk about uh, before we let you go. Let's talk about the stage play and the current play that you're in, because um, it it's got a real Montreal. Well, it's a, it is a Montreal. Um, Vittorio Rossi, who's right? A very very famous local uh, playwright. Uh, a play set in in uh, Little Italy, if I'm not mistaken, Saint Leonard, yeah, in Saint uh, Leonard. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, Villamard. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's it's uh, yeah. we're performing it in in Saint Leonard. Right. Uh, it's it takes place in Villamard. Vittorio being from Villamard. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great story that uh, that he uh, that he's come up with. It's uh, about a, an Italian an Italian family um, landscapers who you know are just hardworking people who ended up losing everything uh, in the Charbonneau Commission. Wow! <clears throat> and it's based on a it's based on a true story that he found out. It was a it was a guy who was a roofer 
and uh, uh, that's that's just what he did. And and you know he was uh, he was associated with some of these people, and just you know guilty by association, he literally lost everything. Oh. Uh, so Vittorio took the family that he had created uh, in his first full length play called The Test of Family, in a, in a, in a <clears throat> play called The Chain, and uh, this literally takes place thirty years later uh, during the Charbonneau Commission. So it's a it's a really intriguing story. This is another uh, set of skills because I I can't even imagine this in front of a live audience. You can't go line. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to be terrifying, isn't it? It is, man. It really is. But I mean, you know, it, it kind of brings us back to our roots. Uh, you know, I haven't been on stage in in almost eleven years. Shit. Wow. So you know, as I was, you know, <clears throat> rehearsing on stage, and you could feel the the rust going. I felt like the yeah. Tin Man. I think he said oil can. <laughs> you know, it's like that. Uh, so you know, and that kind of disappears. But yeah, it is. It's 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 frightening. You know, you've got you know five hundred sets of eyes that look yeah. at you and. Uh, uh, but no, when, when you've got a play written by Vittorio Rossi, it, it's just, it's a powerful piece. Uh, yeah, he, he, the people are laughing and they're crying, and uh, he, he, really, he really knows how to tug at our emotions. How many uh, nights a week do you do that? Uh, we, we're on every day except Monday. Wow, that, <laughs> so. that's another thing. I've, uh, you, know, you, you read all about you know, people who go to a Broadway stage and they're doing, I don't know, seven or eight shows a week. That has to be really, really taxing, isn't it? What? It is. Ta- it's really taxing, especially when you've got two show days. We, yeah. we don't have two show days on this run, but often you have two mat, uh, you know, you have yeah. a, uh, two show days on Wednesday and Saturday, and then you have a matinee on Sunday. So that's, you know, Saturday and Sunday is three shows in two days often. And I think about guys like Billy Crystal, who's, yeah. you know, on Broadway right now yeah. doing Mr. Saturday Night. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, he, he, you know, I'm sure he does have an understudy, but the show is Billy Crystal. Yeah. I mean, he, he has to be there. Yeah. And he, that's, that's, and, you know, he's not 20 years old anymore is either. One of the, one of the, is one of the great things about doing it every night is the next night you can bring something different to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it bringing the freshness back. Okay. It's like the, the first, the, the, this has got to be, you know, and, and this, is why I, this is why I love this place so much too, because there's, there's so much raw emotion in it. Uh, that you that every time you know you 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 bring that passion every night, and that's that's a gift, you know uh, that that you get that you have the privilege of doing this every night, going on there and being able to perform and 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 uh, spill your heart out every night, and then you get a paycheck for it. Which yeah, is, there you which go. Kind of cool. Not a huge paycheck. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I it all adds I, up. Yeah, I don't know how to thank you, Mark. I I could keep talking until the uh, until the lights uh, go out or are turned off, or, or they, they throw, throw us, us out. out. Yeah. yeah. This has really, really been or, fun. Or I drop another name. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I've, I've That's really, been the most fun. Yeah. We've, yeah. It's like uh, we're rubbing elbows with some giants, uh, you know, through rubbing your elbows. And uh, as uh, we said at the beginning of the podcast, you know, you're one of the most accomplished uh, working actors in the country, and it was a real honor to have you. Thank you so, so much. Well, thank you, guys. It's an actual, uh, it's such an honor and pleasure for me. I've been listening to you guys for oh, a long thank time. You. And, uh, we're huge fans. It, you know, we, we listen to this podcast at home. So, uh, Oh, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. so, man, so this is one I can skip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already heard that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully Jesse and, and the kids will be, and, and Pauline will listen to there this. There you go. They yeah. can hear, hear, hear what you had to say about them. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you, Mark. Mark. Standing by the Terry and Ted podcast is sponsored by Jaguar Land Rover Laval, where the luxury is unmistakably British, but nobody wears a top hat or a monocle.